Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make homemade pasta. And with that pasta, I'm putting together some baked artichoke and ricotta rollatinis that are just unreal. So let's dive into the recipe. All right, so the first thing you wanna get started is prepping the filling. So starting with the artichokes, you're gonna trim the stems of the chokes if they're a little too long, since they tend to be a bit woody, and you're gonna remove any lower leaves. After that, you're gonna boil the artichokes for 45 minutes to an hour, depending on the size of the chokes, and make sure they are covered or submerged the whole way through. While you're waiting for those to cook, it's time to make the homemade pasta. So in a food processor, you're going to add in the egg yolks, water, salt, flour, and olive oil. Then you're gonna blend that for two minutes. And just to note, you can do this the traditional well way, uh, but it just takes a little bit longer. Now making pasta is a consistency game, so take the lid off and check if the dough easily sticks together, almost like clay or play-doh. If not, add a bit of water and blend until it's slightly moldable, uh, but not tacky. Once the dough is finished, remove it from the food processor and knead it for about five minutes until you have a very smooth ball of dough. After that, you're gonna cover it with some plastic wrap and allow it to rest for about 30 minutes before rolling it out. When the dough has finished resting though, you're gonna roll it out, divide it, then roll one of the pieces of pasta dough thin enough to easily pass through the pasta machine. Uh, because the first pass is really um, the hardest, you wanna make sure that the, the dough fits in there just nice and snug and doesn't get caught on the sides or in the machine because it kinda sets the tone for the whole process. But after you get that first pass down, uh, you're gonna make one more, then adjust the size down one notch at a time each time you make a pass until you have your pasta sheets. Um, but I usually stop at around setting three or so for this recipe, uh, just for your reference. All right, so now that your pasta dough has been sheeted, reserve any extra dough for another pasta project later on and begin to portion out the size of your Rolotini pasta sheets. Now you can size them a number of different ways, but here I'm making them about two to three inches wide and about four to five inches long. If you want to get a little fancy, you can flute the edges of the sheets with a little pasta cutter, uh, but once that's done, you're going to transfer the dough to a tray and make sure each sheet is dusted with a little flour to prevent them from sticking. Now that the artichokes are finished cooking, you're gonna pull them out of the boiling water and allow them to cool down for about 10 to 15 minutes before handling, or you can ice bath them as well. But once cool enough to handle, remove all the leaves and reserve them for a snack later on with a little bit of melted butter and lemon. And then you're gonna scoop out the hairy center of each artichoke heart.
After the artichoke hearts are all cleaned up, you're gonna give them kind of a slice and dice, just a nice chunky texture. Add them to a mixing bowl along with some chopped arugula, ricotta cheese, egg yolks, lemon zest, salt, and some fresh cracked black pepper, and give it a solid mix. Next, you're gonna pull the pasta sheets out of the fridge and you are simply and very carefully going to boil each one of them until they are al dente. And then you're gonna transfer them to a tray that is generously coated with olive oil. When the pasta sheets have cooled down for a minute, take one of the sheets and begin to build your rollotinis with the filling. Just be sure not to overstuff it, otherwise you'll have a very fun time trying to roll them up. All right, so now that all my rollatinis are finished up, I'm going to pour a little bit of cream that has been steeped with garlic, thyme, and lemon zest for a few minutes on the bottom of my baking dish. Then I'm gonna place a few of the rollatinis right on top of it, add a few more splashes of the cream over my rollatinis, then a good sprinkling of mozzarella and Parmesan to finish. Then this will go into a 375 degree oven for 20 minutes or until the cheese on top is a beautiful, dark, golden, crispy brown. When it's finished, pull them out of the oven, top with a few fresh herbs. Here I have a little bit of oregano, thyme, and some basil. Um, add a little bit more Parmesan cheese because, you know, why not? And there you have it, your artichoke and ricotta rollatinis are finished. Just try not to melt your mouth off. What's up guys? All right, so my artichoke um, rollatini is done. Um, it definitely looks very, very good. Nice and crispy on the outside. Beautiful layer of crispy cheese, the crispy mozzarella and Parmesan. Looks really, really good. And of course, I always add my little um, herb garnish fancy flair because I have a nice little herb garden in the back uh, of a couple pots with thyme and basil, um, sage and a couple other um, herbs that just tend to grow annually so I always have these but um, yeah this looks really really good. I almost went the whole bolognese marinara um, route kind of like a traditional lasagna um, but I had some artichokes, I had cream and the lemon and ricotta and I just thought you know let's put together a nice sort of like blonde baked sort of pasta and I've always wanted to make rollatinis and this was my first attempt at it. Very similar to lasagna in the sense that you kind of have long sheets and you sort of contain all of those ingredients in the sheets. Um, but very very simple concept. Kind of roll up whatever you want in this recipe um, but I'm gonna stop talking, give this a go, see how it tastes. All right let's do it. Crispy, crispy. Ooh. Sometimes it gets like super lava hot. I gotta be careful. So yeah, this is um, really good, but still piping hot. But man, the flavors are great. Lemon zest, the hearty artichoke, that kind of earthy, buttery flavor with artichoke is just so unique to what artichoke is. 
and is really a great replacement for um, any kind of meat or protein that you're putting in here. And the arugula has a nice little spice to it. <laughs> very, very good. I would say this is a super successful recipe, if I do say so myself. Um, just because I'm, I love the idea behind it, this is very easy to kind of veganize. I don't, you don't have to add egg yolk to the pasta. You can do some sort of nut um, cheese like cashew or macadamia to replace the ricotta cheese. Add some acidic notes with um, you know, more lemon zest and maybe a little bit of lemon juice to kind of mimic the goat cheese a bit. Um, but this is very easy to kind of switch up the flavors. I really love making pasta. It's almost therapeutic for me. Uh, just the whole process of rolling it out and getting the dough consistency right. And then once you get that down, really the sky's the limit with what you can do with pasta. You can fry it, you can stuff it with whatever you want. You can make it savory, you can make it sweet, you can go in between, you can kind of meld two uh, worlds as far as like what kind of fillings you want to incorporate and um, even incorporate other um, you know, international cuisines or international flares of their cuisines into the flavor of a ravioli or a pasta. So. Um, I just love making pasta. It's one of those things that brings me a lot of joy and obviously you can create wonderful things with it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this recipe. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you guys are enjoying what I'm doing here. Hopefully you guys are enjoying my new setup. I really love this kitchen. There's a couple of modifications that I want to do to it um, that will really streamline it. But for now, I'm super thankful and uh, it's just a really cool setup. I'm really thankful to finally have a gas burning stove. Electric's great, easy to clean up, but this is definitely far superior as far as BTUs, controllability, um, and all that good stuff. So of course, comment down below for future video requests, things you wanna see on my channel, and I will see you guys next time with another delicious recipe. Later, folks.